Welcome, my name is Honey Ogundeye and we're back on another exciting episode of Analyze This, the show where we break down everything related to finance, the economy, business, basically how to make it big. And I'm here with my co-host, the wonderful... Sunji Andrews. And today we're going to be talking about a topic that is close to my heart, which is, is Agric the new oil? So agriculture has been getting a lot of press recently. Everyone I know seems to be talking about how to make it in agriculture industry. There are even some people that say it's the next oil industry, right? So basically, I heard a little bird told me that if you sell a barrel of palm oil, you make up to four times the amount if you sell a barrel of crude oil. So just imagine Nigeria makes 90, over 90% 90 of our revenue from crude oil. Imagine if we converted all of that to palm oil, we could be making more money than ever. So I'm always interested in finding out the next billion dollar opportunity. And if agriculture is a new one, I definitely want to analyze this. Tunji, what do you think? Should I leave my job of tech or fashion, head to a farm, you know, will you be coming? Um, no, no, no. I, I won't be coming. Not because I, I don't see the opportunities, but I, I, I'm not I'm not yet skilled to do agriculture. And it's it's something that you don't because a lot of times we hear about it and it just sounds like that's thing for dirty people to do. It's actually a very, very skilled um, um, enterprise. Uh, if you don't know how to properly farm, plant, there's all sorts of pesticides, all sorts of things you have to watch out for, the fertilizers, the kind of soil, the kind of place you have to, you know, it's, so it's, it's a technical thing. So it's something that you have to be very skilled at doing. But, you know, Nigeria is that place where we were, Agrik used to be our mainstay. Yeah, so I, like I wasn't old enough to know about this. So, um, but what do you mean you were not old I was enough not old to know? I saw I you mean, were coming, I, I saw no, it and I stopped I was you. just going to say that back in the day, I remember. That what? That you know, my parents would talk about the good old era when uh, agriculture was okay. booming in Nigeria. All right. I was thinking that you could be able to shed more no, light, but if you don't, I don't, I don't. there was a whole time when they I was talked... Not a, I was not around there. <laughs> they talked about before we discovered oil in the 70s, right? Like agriculture used to boom in Nigeria, so there yeah, was a the great we time had of the, the granite, granite pyramids, pyramids yeah. the palm oil, mm -hmm. and then we discovered oil. And there's this whole thing about the great oil curse. Yeah. You know, so most countries, especially African ones, after we discover oil, is different from like countries in Scandinavia who've done very well with, with their know, oil. With their oil and used it to really enrich the economy and their citizens for most African countries it's just been like the death of us mm -hmm. because we stopped focusing on everything else that we were famously good at and we've mm -hmm. just abandoned it to basically in search of like oil it's an easy way for us to make money but these days when the oil started to basically tank we've seen people now return and start looking or just pay more attention to how we can really um, how we can really grow our agriculture sector into something quite formidable mm -hmm. Um, but I always wonder just how profitable is the agriculture industry in Nigeria still? There's still a lot of issues around the subsistence farming. Mm -hmm. A lot of the smallholders and, and farmers in the countryside or in the rural areas can't really get access to the, the full access of the value chain. So they're still not making enough money. And it just seems that sometimes the whole thing just melts down very quickly. In the, way, in the case that we saw with tomatoes uh, yeah, last year, yeah, yeah. where we had issues in the north, and then we can't get into tomatoes. And you know, it just feels like, are we serious about this agricultural thing or are we still playing dice? Well, it's, it's, it's a, I mean, first of all, you need to look at the fact that it's one of our largest contributors to GDP. Yeah. In fact, I think it's the single largest contributor to GDP. Crude oil, surprisingly, is actually a very minute portion. I think it's uh, between 9 and uh, uh, 12%. So it's very small, but it seems to be what is really driving us around. But agriculture is very interesting because, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a structured process. Mm -hmm. Um, for instance, like uh, the palm oil you talk about, uh, talked about, it takes a 12-year process for the um, palm kernel plant itself to mature. Then you harvest it. Then, I mean, that is obviously why it is uh, 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 about four times more expensive because it takes a, 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 a while. But, you know, with crude oil, you just put a straw into the ground and you just suck it up and it comes out of the ground. And, and it's, it's, it's really easy. It's not that easy. You have to <laughs> I'm, I'm paraphrasing, yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, it's it's really like that. Yeah, but I mean, agriculture is one of those places that if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to lose a lot of money yeah, really, yeah. really quickly. And I know that's like with most businesses, but I feel like agriculture is something if you don't really understand what you're doing, you're just going to go in and make a big mess and lose true, a lot of money real true, quick. True. Um, but I'm really excited about people that I'm seeing playing across different areas of the value chain, especially when it comes to agriculture, especially people, um, my friends that I know who are doing stuff. Processing. Like processing, packaging food so I had I know of real food who, who is working with mangoes she's really trying to understand the mango and uh, the mango production value chain in Nigeria mm -hmm. um, this guy who's also growing like you know high sort of high produce uh, juicing and doing 
sort of low price juice in Nigeria. So there's people who are doing lots of farm to table examples, which I'm. But really you see, liking. that's that's another problem with the value chain because that is the you place we should have be going. The negative points. Well, that's what I that's what I look out for. I've told you that's that's my mainstay. I, I find the risk. That is the major. That's one of the biggest problems with the the value chain. It's the processing angle. Yes. It's the fact that we've not been able to organize ourselves to process things. You know, mm -hmm. get them from the raw material version to the finished good. That's why you see that we get cocoa, we send it abroad. The person sells us chocolate at you know four, five, five six times the price of what we sold to him. The same with cashew you know, nuts. Right, cashew well. nuts. So we sell um, like the raw. We don't sh produce. share butter. Share yeah, butter, yeah. same thing with crude oil. I mean, it's every sugar cane. Sugar cane it's, Even it's cassava, the yam, I was Ridiculous, that, right? If you sold like this, but if you processed it to be like... Yeah, but now, here's the thing. We, we're finding situations whereby we do not have the um, um, scale to be able to process everything. And so you find people in short Well, we don't have the areas. scale and we don't have the investment exactly. dollars, right? So it's easier for us to just grow it out the ground and sell it on. Yeah. So um, just to be able to get a bit more clarity on this, we have someone with us in the studio. We'll be shedding some more light as we analyze this. Um, he works in both sectors, the oil and gas sector and also in the agri value chain. And basically will be able to tell us the differences. Um, uh, he, I like to call him the prof. I like to welcome Yomi Faomi to the show. Thank you very much. So, um, oil at, as of today is $44 per barrel. Yeah. Is it ever going to get 100 again? If you can look for a world of course, then you could get $100. Ouch, ouch, ouch. So what is going to happen to us? I mean, the agri, is, agri as a sector is not yet really formed. Um, and the government keeps giving lip service to it. I'm not sure if I'm really seeing anything tangible. Are you uh, on your own side? Yeah, I think the question we need to ask ourselves is that agri will never be like oil. I mean, because of the fact that they are very different. In fact, they are, they are, they are opposites. Okay. In the oil industry, the upstream is the more profitable parts. The downstream is not very profitable. Yeah. In agriculture, the upstream is not profitable. The downstream is profitable. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I'll generally tell people, let's stop talking about agri. I think it's reading old. You know, it's not good for you to read book one and not read book two. <laughs> I think agri is book one. Food is book two. Right. Mm. So, for example, if I produce ten dollars worth of cocoa from a farm, which I've done after three years, and I sell it to Mars to make chocolate, at the minimum they're going to make a hundred dollars of chocolate alone, and not the other ten potential byproducts. Mm. So that's why, for example, Netherlands won't talk agri. Netherlands will talk food. Food. That's wow. why you go and so eat pizza for how much? Wow. Yeah, it's not about that. I just, I just, I just feel, I just feel dull right now. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All of a sudden. <laughs> but taking it back, so what part of the value chain do you play in agri or food? Okay, so I, I produce um, natural products, foods, and animals. Um, the not too profitable part of it, okay. but it's more fun. I mean, it's good to play with chickens and pigs and okay. quails and all of that. So. So, and then some of us are going to because that's what we have always learned to do. You know, uh, so you were talking about having experience. Uh, so if you have gotten experience raising birds after a while, um, you know you are stronger there than you want to do. And I think that's one of the things everybody should think about. You know, people say go to agriculture, go to where you are strongest. Mm -hmm. uh, because of the fact that a single risk can take out your profit and you may not recover in years. Yeah. Mm. So how did you get started in agriculture? Is it, you know, like I'm thinking whether I should drop this whole tech fashion thing that I'm doing and basically just head to a farm? and start, you know, rearing some pigs and some chicken and, you know, I can, you know, I can package them and I can sell them and then I'll be rich and I'll be a billion dollar person. <laughs> okay, there's no rich person in Nigeria, a very rich person that came from agriculture, so you don't have any opening rich going to agriculture. Let's be very <laughs> with ourselves. But I think the question we need to ask is that you need to ask yourself how you want to go. So, but, so for me, I'm directly into production, but you don't need to go directly into production. So there are people that now have a website where you can invest in their farm. That's my I mean, kind of area. Yeah, yeah, so that works for you. There could also be an opportunity for you to invest in agricultural firms, um, so that agricultural uh, on the firms on the stock exchange yeah. is also agriculture yeah. if you don't have time to go there uh, going there physically takes quite a lot because of the fact that for you to get the kind of land that will get the result you want uh, mm -hmm. you may need to go a little bit from the urban center mm -hmm. and of course that has implication for infrastructure and all of those things again uh, if you want to go into agriculture look at the old the whole chain. Value chain, yeah. don't start big Okay. You know, when big people like you want to go to agriculture, the no, first you want to get so. 75 wow. acres and tractors. Wow. No, 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 you're not going to make That's it that Tunji. way. Tunji is the big guy. Oh, okay, the, the two both of you, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it, go small, start with where you are strong, get the expertise. You know, what will shock you, for example, is that if you're going to get raised the old chicks, that's for poultry, for example, okay. buying from this person versus buying from that person can determine whether you're going to make 1% profit or 100% profit. Wow. wow. 
So what will shock you, for example, if you don't have industry knowledge? So in Nigeria, for example, there are only five farms that have what they call the grandfather stock. That's the purest breed of chickens in Nigeria. If you don't buy from them and you buy from an albino or a second hand or mixed one, then you're going to get the surprise of your life. So now when you buy that chick, for example, from those guys that have the grandfather, when you are selling to you, they give you a manual. Mm -hmm. So it's like buying the gadgets. In day one, give them water. In day two, give them this. In day three, give them that. If you miss it by six hours, you will not recover in six days. So if your if your chicken are supposed to be eating a cup of meal and that's what they prescribe and they're supposed to start laying tomorrow, and a day before or tomorrow you don't give them that cup of meal, you may need to feed them for two weeks to get there. So it's very regimented, it sounds, really sound, complex. scientific. Agriculture is not. It's it's what do they call it in secondary school? Agricultural what? Science. Science. science yeah. yeah. Well, so we know we keep talking about that Greek. I forget it's a science. I know yes. science about precision mm -hmm. and exactly. Mm -hmm. Very, very important. Um, a lot of our industries are trying to move towards, you know, substituting their um, raw materials to going Nigerian, especially the uh, fruit juice industry. But um, I heard something. I'm, I'm not. I can't really uh, confirm it. But I was hearing that um, a lot of them that were using concentrate from Nigeria were finding it difficult to source their uh, raw materials in terms of oranges and the rest, and they had to still go back to concentrates. So how difficult is it to, to source? I love, this is my favorite question, because you know, when I travel, the first thing that I go and buy is like orange juice, like not made from concentrate, and it's always so nice. And I always honest, I don't understand why we can't produce that same quality, the quality juice here. Juice. What is wrong with our yeah. oranges? Quality and quantity. Mm -hmm. So, for example, you're going to supply somebody that has a production chain. So, the production chain, you know, machines don't split. Yeah. Um, so, if they say, give me two oranges per hour, it's got to be two oranges per hour. One, you're not going to get the average Nigerian firm that can guarantee you two oranges per hour. True. Secondly, uh, the quantity. So, for example, I mean, you can imagine one of the big um, uh, companies that produce that. You can imagine the amount of oranges they want. So, for you to be able to get a single farmer. So, what they may need to do, and again, it's a question of uh, creativity. So, they could start an outgrower system where, mm -hmm. for example, they'll say, we need 5,000 oranges. And therefore, we're going to look for 100 people that we're going to supply, uh, how much that, 50, 50 or 500, whatever the case may be, and invest in them. Again, one of the problems with those Jews, they don't want to invest in people. Mm -hmm. Right, so you invest. You just in want them. to take it off them. You invest in them. Not only do you invest in them, you also invest in the kind of crop they grow. Yeah. So when I was growing on my dad's farm, where he had cocoa, was doing seven years. Now we do three years mm. of production because agriculture is a science. Yeah. So, for example, so I can you get you. Yeah. So I, the Maybe average this is where I could come in with the tech. Angle. Yeah. So the average pig in Cuba, no, the average cow in Cuba, when we see what it produces in milk. The average, when you say Nigerians are lazy, I say even our cows too. Are lazy. I mean, <laughs> Nigeria is not lazy, it's just a system, right? But the point is that, so you see a cow in a country where it's produced to be strong. The other thing I need to mention is that, okay, so think about the science around it. So I give you an instance. So you want to start a poultry, for example, right? Uh, you know, you could use cages. Yes. It's more expensive, yeah. uh, but people don't, so when you don't have enough money, you make them free range. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now that's exactly. And organic, and that's like yeah. expensive. So you have the chicken laid up and your whatsoever. But you know what's happening to the ones on free range going around and around? Part of the what they should use to convert to meat and egg for you, they are using to work up and down. Mm. Mm. So their eggs will likely be smaller, their chicken, will, their meat will likely be leaner. So what you mm. think you sometimes save in agriculture, you, you lose down the road. Yes. So that's part of the science that, okay, if I decide not to do this, what's going to be the implication for me? If I try mm. to do this, feed is also another issue. So when you want to compound field, um, I'm trying to get the exact figure, but like 85%, 90% of the feed of chicken is from the smallest thing in the feed. Mm. So when people say it's agbado and corn, they eat chicken. The chicken that produces the kind of eggs you want, don't eat agbado. The agbado must be, agbado is corn, right? <laughs> yeah. Must be such that it has a lot of um, those trace elements. Now, those trace elements are not produced in Nigeria. Right? Oh. So, for example, when we had issues with dollars, many farms closed down. Yeah, I see, I see this dollar situation always gets into every... Every yeah, it's a of society. But, but dollar is everywhere. People even be at dollar core. I mean, so where do you, I mean, so, I mean, where, where dollar rise? I mean, let's be real. I mean, so every time, uh, even so, so that's so when we say locally sourced, and we're talking about local farming, that it's still susceptible to dollar increases in dollar. If you do cases. local farming, you're not going to make money. Mm. If you really want to make money from agriculture, you, you have, have to, to you have use to scale it up. 
that. I mean, you, you know, you know the funny thing. So look at lights and then when you're working. You see chicken, let me give you this answer. Chicken, chicken, chicken when they produce eggs, they need they need light. Yeah. So if you produce chicken without electricity, the amount of eggs you produce is already limited. But I can make chicken to produce twice more by putting electricity. Because once chickens see darkness, what do they do? They go sleep, right? So what I need to do is to simulate daylight. Right. So when I put more light, instead of them to lay one egg per day and go to sleep, I can make them lay two eggs, three eggs in two days because they'll think it's a day. So now what? you've gone back to generator and power costs and all that. Yeah, so, so you realize how they're connected, wow. light, this water, really, and all really, of them. Really I keep telling people, let's stop calling it agri. That's why we don't do it well. Let's call it what it is, agricultural science. science. The when we emphasize the size, and then we now move again to, to, food. to food. I mean, how much is a chicken in the farm? Mm. But when you go to eat in an eatery, how much is chicken? How much is pizza? What is pizza? Tunji likes pizza. Tunji, how much is pizza? Why did you ask me? It's 4,000 naira. See? Yeah, 4,000 naira. You can plant some acres with some animals with just 4,000 naira, some plants. So, but the question is that they are processed wow. it and put wow. it in the Bro, box. That's not fair. So you're saying I eat 4,000 an acre. Hey, wow. eat an acre. And he eats sometimes two wow. acres. I don't know how much wow. you want us to go I with that, feel, but should we convert it to sad. cement, for example? I mean, maybe we have actually eaten a bungalow in the beginning. Okay, <laughs> it's definitely <laughs> worse. Wow. <laughs> wow. And oh, Jesus. Bungalow, you see what I'm always telling you on set? <laughs> but wow. ask yourself this question. How much is a bag of rice? Tunji, how much is a bag of rice? Um, like it, it, it's eight nine, five. Uh, yeah, lake rice eight eight five. Yeah. So if you eat pizza, well, why don't like wow? So, so like so. So, in Nigeria, so every time you eat pizza, oh, that's Jesus. that's a bag of rice. Go for deliverance after wow. Time. So. This but the, but that's when between you agriculture. Eating, <laughs> you, are eating, you are now eating two acres of, wow. <laughs> of money and now you're eating a building that you're living in. You are eating it in pizza. That's what you are doing here. So wow. you, that's the between agriculture and food. But there are still some things I just don't understand. Like we produce rice in Nigeria. Why is rice so expensive? Because you're not producing it well. We produce yep. cocoa. Why is chocolate so expensive? Yeah, because you're, you're not you're, refining. You're not refining. You're yeah. not producing. Why is the cashew not so expensive in the store? Yeah, okay, so let's talk a bit about <laughs> cashew. You know, you give people don't I get love this. Cashew. So I give you an instance. So cashew, for example, when you pluck cashew, yeah. right, and you want to process, you want to break it. You see, when you break that cashew, and a tiny weeny part gets broken, mm. the value of that cashew could have gone down by up to twenty percent. Mm. We do know how to break cashew in Nigeria. Oh, Your people are back. So again. you realize one of the things that will shock you, for example, is that Nigeria really does not export cashew. We export cashew to Vietnam, who exports elsewhere for us. Why do we do that? That's what we need to know. We can we crack successfully. So cracking. Okay, so problem. we send the uncracked version. Oh, to we send Vietnam. the uncracked. The partially right. cracked one and all of yeah. those things. They yeah. don't make. They don't do anything to it. Vietnam sends it to another country. Send it to the U.S. and get. And so, then somewhere along the way, it's going to get tagged as Vietnam nuts, right? It's if, not going to be called. If now you go. Is it Nigeria? <laughs> <laughs> so so the, again, the question, but it says it's also wow. a question of science. So you know, I mean, I don't know whether you ever go. Why can't to we village. just buy not crack? Not crackers. Well, right. well, you could, but the question again is that do you have the skill? You remember, I mean, do you remember when, oh, I don't know, many years ago, you go That's to the village, you, you take what things. they call a kuro. So you meet the guys in the village, a kuro is palm That canel. I know that. that I this know I know. That. This I know. You know, this is palm that canel. thing we use is copra. Wow. Nigeria used to export copra. Wow. Wow. That's a kuro that we yeah. used to play. Uh -huh. And then when you finish, you use it to play games, yeah, right? Okoto yeah. and all of that. Nigeria used to export it. Wow. But when oh you get God. to the village, the guy who can crack it with one person, he just does, and it cracks. You that came from Lagos, yeah. you think, uh, I will call the Arigoni music, right? You put your energy <laughs> down there and still discard it. So the point to make is that you, you get, the skill is very very important. And I want to suggest anybody that wants to go there, learn. Go learn. Yeah. There are places so where you research, can learn today. Research. Learn. Know what you can learn do. Learn best practice. And we got Google now, so yeah. we don't yeah, have it makes it easy. Yeah. I think the last one, the other point I need to make that we need to invest in our research institutes. Yeah. Right. Nigeria yeah. has over... We have quite 12, a number of yeah. research institutes. So, but, but the question you need to ask is, what why is that important? Do? Yeah, because... Because they learn how to do it better every yeah. day. They learn the best new practices. So I told you my father... But does that fix the problem that we have when you're saying we can't process nuts, or we can't process coconut, or we can't it's process... It's part of your research. It's part of your research. So there's a Nigerian Stored Product Research Institute that can... All this year about talking about tomatoes get spoiled on the world. We have a research institute dedicated to that. There is a Firo in Lagos. There are federal, yeah, industrial, Firo, whatever. Yeah, they're yeah. supposed to make equipment. So they could start to make those crackers. We have a Nigerian um, cereal, whatsoever, somewhere. We have Nigerian sort of 
uh, international culture. So we need to invest yeah. more. Is that private sector or is that a public sector? No, all those ones are public, public sector. sector. But you have the one that is more invest more between a multinational. That's the international structure approach. Yeah. IIT is in Ibadan. It's the best. I mean, Ibadan is the center for agriculture research, and there are up to twelve research agriculture agencies around Ibadan. Now you'll see the difference between Nigeria and the other part of the world. Mm -hmm. So IIT is international, doing excellently well. They have revolutionized the way we produce cassava. If you go to the other side of it, you have Crane, Cocoa Research of Nigeria. Cocoa is still where it was, not like. Mm -hmm. so if you go to the other side of it, you go to Nihil, Nigerian Horticultural Institute. Those are the guys that are supposed to invest in fruits and horticulture. Actually, if you go there and say you want to buy fruit, you'll likely be directed elsewhere. Right. So well, we still have a lot in, of work to do. That's nigh out. Wow. If you go the other way in addition, so you your go to first. So your experience can vary depending on... on well, but you, you see, there are people that already understand that, right? So they already tell, they know the way and then they can show you the way. Wow. This sounds really, really cool. Now you get why I call him the prof. Yes, definitely right. we've yeah. been schooled. And I have to say, <laughs> it makes me want to give more props to the guys who are actually... Doing, doing something, something. In the you mean sector. people like us? You said people, guys. I mean, you mean people like us. Yes, people like you. I mean, say it, say it. I'm no, here. People like Prof is really, really excellent with the work that you do. And for every other person I know, or I don't know, or I buy your products, it's super important because it sounds so complex mm -hmm. and such an investment. But I'm so excited to see some of the products that we're actually seeing coming out of the food industry, as I've learned to call it now. I'm very excited. I love there's some yogurt suppliers now. There's guys who are doing cash in on in spite of the fact that we can't crack them. Mm -hmm. um, Rice, I'm not doing so much of, but you know, I'm really excited for these sort of new age companies who are really mm -hmm. focusing on providing value in the Nigerian sort of food sector. Yeah, and please, if you must go, please get insurance. Okay. Yeah. So you know, we had floods. I don't in think Lagos. I'm. I'm, I'm joining yeah, floods in Lagos. We had floods in Lagos, yeah. and did you see the picture of the guy that picked uh, catfish on the road? Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw that, that came from someone's farm. Yeah, wow. it's escaped. Oh, escaped. Oh, my God. So, have you thought about the impact of the flood on all on the farms? farms. Oh, the farms. Oh, yeah. And yeah. who's paying for that? Yeah, so yeah. that's why you need agriculture insurance. insurance. Yeah. Yeah. I had True. a friend who decided to go and start making maize, and they opened the dam. And then, sorry, right. They oh. opened the dam in... Um, in wow. Cameroon. I don't even know what happened. In I Cameroon. Can tell. And I'm talking about hectares. Uh, I saw the picture. You had to use canoe on the... You didn't see the it's rice. So if you don't have insurance, yeah, you're gone. gone. So part of what you need to go to so is start trying to think about that culture insurance as you go. And from the consumer point of view as well, I think we need to patronize more made in Nigeria brands, right? Made in Nigeria food brands. Because, I mean, if you do all this work and you Nobody get comes to that people are still looking to prefer international brands, then, you know, what's it all for? You know? yeah. We have yeah. to help these guys become profitable. We have to support our own. So I'm not running to a farm in no time, I don't think, Prof. I think I'm going to stay <laughs> right here in Lagos with my computer and my laptop. But I've super been educated on, you know, the agri sector. Um, mm -hmm. I think it still has a long way to come in the next oil, but it's definitely an interest sector that holds a lot of potential, right? True, Sergi? true, true. Uh, thank you guys for being with us on the show. Um, you can also continue the conversation with us if you're into agriculture in any way, agricultural science. <laughs> Do let us know. Um, you can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, everywhere, 2J Andrews. And also you can... You can reach me at Honey Open Day on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, and on YouTube. I would love to hear your favorite Made in Nigeria agricultural food products. Also, Prof? Yeah, okay. Um, you're the Prof on Twitter, and then you can meet me on my farm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to go and check out Prof Farm for sure. Also, do not forget to follow uh, at Indani TV and also use the hashtag analyze this. Till next time, guys. Have a great week. Thank yeah. you.